Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Run It Back. My name is Remco Rinkema, and today I am joined by my good friend Jeff Platt, the most mediocre, the most average poker player <laughs> that I can find. But he is now a Twitch celebrity, a Twitch star, Platinum Platt. He is joining me today for this very show. We are going to watch season two. This is like 27 years ago, Poker After Dark, featuring an iconic cast of characters, which we'll dive into in just a minute. But first and foremost, Jeff, how are you holding up? Because it seems as though I see you every single day now. Do you live yeah. on the internet now? Well, first of all, that's the most complimentary anybody has ever been about poker skills. Mediocre, average, man, I will take that <laughs> and uh, and run for the hills. You know, that Remco, this is this is kind of a, an early morning affair. You know, our Twitch streams have been late at night. We went up to four in the morning the other night to cover the mini main event. So it feels a little bit weird in the AM hours, but I'm happy. I'm excited to be here. I'm a fan of the Run It Back show, and and let's do it, man. Poker after dark. <laughs> oh, it just sounds so beautiful. I love it. A coffee for the occasion, iced coffee, if you will. Hmm. Um, is there is there Pinot Noir in your cup today? <laughs> yeah, you know, as much as I would love to, Remco, to have a glass of the good stuff uh, at 10:01 in the morning, I'm just going to go with a monster energy drink with the straw though remco because these drinks they'll crush your teeth you got to be safe you got to be safe mm -hmm. it's definitely something i have to consider uh, for everyone watching and just tuning in run it back is a show in which i have a guest and we break down some epic poker footage sometimes it's a player who was at a final table sometimes it was a player who was in a cash game or sometimes like jeff platt it's a poker fan who just wants to relive some of these experiences. Yep. And of course, there are seven seasons of high stakes poker available on Poker Go. Those are the old school seasons. And then we brought it back. And then there was Tom Dwan. And then there was all this craziness happening. Those are also all available on Poker Go. If you're wondering, you know, why are these guys talking over the action? That's the purpose of the show. If you want to watch this without commentary, <laughs> you go to PokerGo.com right now to watch all the action. Um, Jeff, let's get this started. Let's figure out what's what's happening in this game uh, on Poker After Dark. We know who's in the lineup, but let's let's have Shauna, just tell us the story. That's the best way to do it. Let's roll it. Welcome to the director's cut of Poker After Dark. I'm Shauna Hyatt. Tonight, we'll recap all the big hands and all the smack talking from this week's table. We'll see how the winner navigated through this tough field on his way to winning $120,000. All right. Oh, the intro. Can't talk yeah, over the, the intro, intro, of course. Classic. Iconic, I should say. Mm. There they are. Yes. A few criminals and a few poker players. <laughs> yeah, Poker After Dark was a great tournament. This is the best Poker After Dark I've, I've ever played. It was a fun table. All right, so we got Alan Boston, Antonio S. Fendiari, Mike Saxton, uh, Shauna Hyatt, of course, in the middle, Mike uh, Matisau, Jamie Gold, and Paul Wasica, of course, wow. runner up to Jamie Gold in the 06 main event. And I believe that's probably the reason why they put these guys side by side. Uh, for the people who are wondering, this is a strange episode of Poker After Dark. Well, it is. It is the director's cut. If you don't want to watch seven full seasons of action, I would highly recommend watching the last episode of every week because then you get the director's cut. You get some of this table talk, behind the scenes, all that good stuff. So Jeff and I will try not to talk over this as much as possible because, you know, there's some probably some good quotes and gems in here. But he's funny. I mean, he, he just makes me laugh. Antonio Esfandiari, a World Poker Tour champion who would love to add a Poker After Dark title to his resume. Mike Sexton. Legend. Mike is a very yeah. good player. He's solid, but he also again. knows how to use that image and make moves when he needs to make moves. Um, old school pro. I mean, the guy is rock solid. Mike Madison, oh who I think is... Mike Madison, he's been in hot water lately. Uh, but, you know, he's been on so many of these episodes. It's, uh, yeah. it, it's sort of... He's, he's sort of part of the furniture as far as some of these shows go. Um, yeah, he was like a go-to for Poker After Dark back in the day, especially with that 
that full tilt patch that got you into a little more book after dark action. Exactly. Um, J- Jeff, you know, I, I, you and I have talked about this before, but remind me again, uh, poker after dark, was this your late night viewing back when this was the first all airing? Yeah, absolutely. I can remember the very first week of shows on NBC with that, that infamous Helmuth rant where he calls in Maury from, from backstage to come out and deal with just a super, super minor issue. I loved it, man. We, we, we would watch it in college. Uh, every single night you know came on super late which was perfect for us and it's just i mean it's still absolutely iconic and when we were talking about what episode to pick i kind of wanted to go back to the the old school sit and go days you know you play a tournament there's a winner at the end who profits 100k it's beautiful yeah exactly because you know even though there was cash on the table this was definitely yeah, a right. sit and go uh 20k buy-in 120k up top uh, but they had the cash there because of course that makes it feel so much more real which is really funny to see i think that's a great strategy by the show <laughs> to put cash on the table yep all right With i think we're into our first hand here let's see what this is 100 the magician antonio esfandiari had the chip lead when Alan Boston and Paul Wasica squared off. I gotta make sure my cards are in front of this blue thing here, a black thing. Kid or never loses about to raise one here. Good job, kid. Excellent race. This is Alan Boston. He'll just talk, 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 talk. He never oh, stops. He, he really never stops. He is, he's a college basketball betting legend, um, frequent guest on the poker cast. Now, of course, the Dat poker cast with uh, Adam Schwartz, um, Ross, Terrence Chan, and Daniel Negreanu. Um, quite a legend in the sports betting realm, which is, you know, hot topic nowadays because, you know, every single sport is having its playoffs right now. Um, we got a little bit of a three bet action here with Kings. Yeah. He goes a very, very small three betting sizing, which is kind of the thing. We'll be shown, and it uh, went raise, re raise, and the kid's a good player, and he called the re raise, so he has a good hand there. My game's heads gotten up. a little bit better. If it didn't, so why'd you have to bring heads trouble. into this, man? Come on, that's not fair, Angie. Good flop. Okay. And it comes Queen Jack Rag. No, I mean, <laughs> possibilities of hands of his are, are Jack's Queens. Tens, ace king, something like that. If it's tens or ace king, I got him killed. If it's jacks or queens, he has me killed. So I just checked the flop. I played it conservatively. Yeah, say so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> no lies were spoken in that sense. Right, right. Okay. And now it comes the nine of clubs in a turn just to really make it uh, so the pocket could get really big if you wanted to gamble with tens or, or nines or something like that. So That's I just true. checked it again on the river. Jeff, uh, uh, let's let's play um, a sideline sl- sideline analyst here. Sure. Um, you know, king of clubs, kings over pair, gut shot, the whole shebang. Yeah. You know, how, how are we not getting a bet in on the, t- on the turn there? Well, it's funny that he mentions uh, what Wasika could have possibly called his his three bet with pre flop, and he was like, okay, so maybe queens, maybe jacks, ace king, maybe tens. You know, and it's just like it's just such a like. <laughs> My new limited range, and, and man, if that's what if that's those are the only hands you think he's calling the three bet with free, uh, you know, I don't mind going check, 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 check. But yeah, maybe we can maybe we get a bet in before the river, um, get a little more value from this hand. It is it is really funny how and of course you know Alan Boston is 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 a character and you know he has his own playing style probably. But back in the day, you know, three betting was kind of a big deal. If you if you sure. put a three bet in, you know, that was pretty scary. True, even if it was like I think the initial raise was to. 900 and the three bet was just like to 2200 so barely over 2x on a three bet and nowadays you see more in the three to three and a half x range um and and players call so much wider than what boston put wants to on right gets paid off though wow what do we know better the river just to get something out of it and uh it was probably about as much as I could have won there. He obviously had the, had the small pair. I mean, he played it perfectly. He got that value. That's true. That's true. From Wasika's standpoint, what's a tight player like Boston three betting with that doesn't get there? Like ace king exactly? I was just going to say. You just check back. I mean, he's never three betting ace 10. Ace jack no, Ace jack suited is, you know, as far as if we're constructing right. the range here, is, right. is maybe in there, but he loses to that, so it doesn't really matter. Same for ace queen. So yeah, it, he loses to everything else besides ace king, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Jamie and I love playing against each other. Uh, we're pretty good friends, and, uh, you know, I'm always looking for an opportunity for redemption um, to get back on the felt with him. <laughs> it's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> But you never I'm know. old and I forget quick. I mean, 
redemption, you know, losing a heads up battle that cost him six million dollars because that's probably what they were playing for back in the 06 yeah. main event. Um, let me ask you this Were you a Jamie Gold fan in 2006 or were his antics off putting to you? No, I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a really cool change of pace to have somebody who talked that much during a hand. We saw plenty of personality 2003, 2004, 2005. They talked a little bit during the hands, but gold was was just nonstop. Now, I'm sure at the 2006 main event, sitting at a table with him, maybe it would wear on you a little bit more. But as far as the edited episodes were concerned, I loved it. What do you think about Jamie in, in 2006? Oh, I was a massive fan. The blueberries, okay. Okay. Johnny Chan on the rail, just the, the the banter back and forth. I mean, the 2006 main event had had as many sort of bad guys as you can possibly imagine. You know, Perlot Friedman yeah. was chirping at everyone. Jeff Lissandro and yeah. and those guys were going back and forth. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of this other oh, kid's wait. name. There was a, a young kid who went really deep, who was just like constantly, um, you know, f verbally fighting with everyone. I'm going to find his name, actually. Um, but yeah, he was one yeah, of those guys. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. And he was like maybe even crying at one point. I know I know, I know which kid you're talking about. Yeah. How I about that river? The eight ball corner pocket. Oh. And Wasika just min raises. It's funny because Gold was usually the one hitting those, hitting those hands. Right, right. Instead, Gold finally does hit and then goes check, check. Yeah. Unflop and turn when he has an absolute monster. Call you, brother. While Boston chirped away in the background, Jamie was left <laughs> to wonder what Paul had. Wow. It's a good chance I'll be invited more How can you fold Trip Queens? Never shut up and I, think I never He's, he's only pop. thinking about re raising. There we go. And the he rematch goes rewrites. as falls. I love this. Jamie re-raised to a total of 10,000 and what had been a very average hand quickly became very interesting. I am so lost in this hand. I've been watching everything too. I just have no clue. Uh, yeah, that makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't get it. I mean, in Wasika's shoes, putting in another raise is probably a bad idea. He could, right, have, right, he could right. have some full house combos, but we're never ever folding here. No, absolutely not. It's 5K into 20K man. against Jamie Gold. Possible. Yeah, and I might get married in a half an hour. And you know Gold is sitting there thinking, I want to call, I want to call, I want to call. Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> Just what? a joke. <laughs> What'd you say? I said she'd have to be blind and deaf. It's all right. Just kidding. Just kidding. It's all good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is so funny. He's thinking for a long time. This is like really 2007 is. or like what do you like? Yeah. Check, 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 check. What are the chances of the bluff, rebluff, rebluff? <laughs> I'm just wondering if you're overvaluing a hand. <laughs> he is. <laughs> But also, I you were just his hand is really deal. good. Right, but it's... Shut up, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. No matter what happens, I want you both to know that I deeply love you. You know? <laughs> you, give, bring, you bring joy and entertainment to my life. And uh, I mean, I'm just wondering if that you makes were me just, sleep Were you night. just stealing before, or, or did you... Obviously, I wasn't stealing. Wow. Wait, like, well, you could have easily been raising me just because you thought I was making a stab at it. Somebody call the clock on Washington? Yeah. Can we call, call the clock already? Sir. And it's a sit and go. Gold's going to flip over what he thinks is definitely the winner. Wasika called and won a nice <laughs> pot. Nice sir. Wow. That's kind of a slow roll. Come on, let, let, let us know in the chat if, right. you, if you think that was a slow roll. Um, also, for the people joining us here on Run It Back, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are on YouTube, and, and like us on Facebook if you are watching us on Facebook. We're live in both places. Um, nice. Send us in your questions as well. We are totally live. If you have any questions for us about whatever it might be, maybe some hot takes, we'll make sure to try to deliver those to you. Um, someone is asking, and this is actually interesting. Someone's asking uh, Jeff, 
Would you work at Applebee's for five years in Tupelo, Mississippi or Missouri? 40 hours a week, three, three weeks vacation for $2.8 million a year. <laughs> it's funny. I think I know this uh, this person from my Twitch chat who asked very similar questions. Let's see. Applebee's five years in Tupelo, Mississippi, 40 hours a week, $2.8 million. Uh, I would go with no. How about you, Remco? All um, due respect to the great people at Tupelo, Mississippi. I've been to Tupelo. They're very nice. I mean, you know, 40 hours a week isn't that much. I work a lot more now. So I would actually work less. Um, Applebee's, sure. never been. Is that like Olive Garden? Um, yeah, it's like the American food version of Olive Garden. Right. So I don't know. 2.8 million a year. I think, you know, cost of living is very low there. I can just, you know, save all that money and then live, live, live a big life. Live a big life for the, for the remainder of my life. Um, yeah, but I would, that, man, that's five years. You're locked in, baby. Yeah, but I'll have internet. I'll be fine. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right. Well, we'll see you in Tupelo. Where are you right now? North Dakota? North Dakota. So, North yeah. Dakota. It's actually lovely here. Uh, compared I bet to, it is. Compared to the 115 degree heat that you're <laughs> dealing with, um, this is actually quite great. Um, I'm really a big fan. Um, Cashy Elaine is saying, wasn't, um, wasn't this the year, the main event in 06, where William Thorson also got deep? Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. William Thorson, I finished, believe, finished in 13th place. Mm -hmm. Side note, his dad missed out on the final table of the 03 main event. His name is Olaf, by only just a few spots as well. They both finished ah. in the final two tables of the main event, three years apart, and Thorson has never recovered. I believe he busted with King Jack um, against Jamie Gold with 13 left. Um, yeah, he's out of poker. He actually became, I think, a Buddhist or something like that. Um, ah. Definitely left poker behind. But yeah, 06 main event. We were talking about the 06 main event. Eric Molina was the name of the kid. Yes. Who was, yes, uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Cursing up a storm. Also, Cashy Lane on YouTube also um, gave us that information. Oh, I just hit a button. I just skipped back for no reason. Let's go back to okay. the action here. Um, but yeah, no, 06 main event, probably my favorite main event. Let us know in the chat, Facebook or YouTube, what your favorite main event was to watch. I think 06 and 04 to me are my two favorites. Uh, the Greg Raymer year, there was just so much, mm -hmm. so much animosity in the room. There was so much mm -hmm. good, good clashes and confrontations. And 06 had that vibe as well. So um, I think I'll probably go with uh, with 06, but it's it's pretty close. Yeah, that's a tough one. I, I might I might lean 04. Or, yeah, it's also hard to go against the classic 2003. With right. the great Chris Moneymaker to start the poker boom. And I mean, and Phil Ivey busting just before the final table. Yeah. yeah. You still had a Helmuth rant in in that year of main event coverage. So that was pretty strong as well. Uh, Joel on Facebook is saying, I live about an hour from Tupelo. I'll take it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> pretty good deal for you, Joel. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jeanette is saying, yes, that was slow rolling. I think I agree. I mean, maybe he tried to get under Jamie's skin a little bit there with the straight because obviously his range includes a lot more than just full houses. Let's be real. All right. Yeah. Here we go. I'm dead now. Here's a hand, but I, oh, five, I suppose five, I can get out. Five, five, five. With so much in the pot already and only 36.50 left to call, Mike Sexton's decision was an easy one. How much? 36.50. I'm rooting for Sexton here, Remco. Yeah, <laughs> of course, always. Antonio got out. There's not a single all-in that I don't root for Mike Sexton. I have to right. Be I mean, look at look at that. He wears a suit. Just looks incredibly classy. Again, one of the greatest ambassadors that poker has had. Exactly. I no totally agree. No question about it. Now we just need these you nines to hold. Yep. That's a big surprise. Good luck, boys. Good luck, boys. Good luck, boys. One thing you know, Mike, you got to win races to win tournaments. And I knew what the worst I was was a race. I thought I might even have to. Also, coin flips back in the day were, were just, you know, the thing you didn't want for some reason. Nobody wanted to play <laughs> high variance. Nobody wanted to be all in before the flop. Tell you once. This is the hand that well, Antonio had. <laughs> oh no, yeah, they jack when the queen rolled off. I'm gonna get there. I feel it. I really do. You feel it? Which way? I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I'm walking out the door. Oh, beautiful turn card. Three to one dog. Uh, one more. Never won a race in my life. <laughs> of course, here comes the complaints <laughs> oh, already. Yeah. Right. For Mike. I really did feel this. All right. Yeah, silly way to six. Uh, nice back hands. to back six. And and every single player who was wearing one of those full tilt patches probably was there on the free roll. So these were for big, sure. These were big moments for these guys. That's true. 
I mean, with 120K up top from a $0 buy-in <laughs> and to get that NBC exposure, which was big for some of these guys for the potential to be on NBC for a week straight. Exactly. Very good as far as branding is concerned. I'm not sure if Mike was concerned with that. Uh, he was concerned about the 120K yeah. up top. All right, we're down to five. I have played Remco with both Mike and Jamie on oh. Poker After Dark. Don't mean to brag, though, wow. Remco. Wow. Do not mean to brag. I mean, it, it took a whole 20 minutes, but I'm glad we have arrived here, <laughs> Jeff. Please tell the story. Uh, my first time I played Poker After Dark, it was 25.50. Had to sell off most of my action, obviously. And Mike Mattiso was on my left, I believe, for both days, which is fine. But, you know, Mike likes to... Likes to chat a little bit, um, but he was very, very kind to me. Just has not been kind to others, which is completely unacceptable. But we don't have to uh, dive into that rabbit hole. And then for a 5K sit and go, I played uh, with the great Jamie Gold. It's a lot of fun. It's good times. It, Didn't it's, win that. It's, and that's thanks to Chance Corner. But again, another story for another day. But in general, though, and even though you had to sell a lot of pieces, and I myself have dabbled in some WSOP events, the stories and the memories of playing against some of these, you know, superstar, yeah. you know, familiar faces, big time players, whether it's from back in the day or from current years, is just really cool to tell someone because you'll always have that story, even though you know it costs you a bit of money. Um, I won. I won a really cool hand against Scotty Wynn playing a mixed game yeah. event at the yeah. WSOP, and I was just retelling that story, you know, as, as often as I can because it's I don't really have a whole lot to go on. So yeah, just, it's like. That's our that's our dream, right? We go up, we grow up watching these shows. We watch the series, we cover the series, we watch Poker After Dark, we cover Poker After Dark, and to get the chance to be in the mix, you and the series, me and Poker After Dark, it's just like it sounds corny, but it's like it's what your poker dreams are are made of, and it's it's cool to see them uh, kind of come into reality. Exactly. All right, we have Alan Boston and Jamie Gold going at it. Um, I'm sort of predicting a fold here from Alan Boston, so I'm going to run through the comments here uh, in just a sec. Uh, we got a lot of 2006 love for favorite main yeah. events. Uh, 2013 gets a lot of mention, and, and people are saying uh, uh, Jord van Hove, the cleaner. That was 2014 because that was Martin Jacobson's mm -hmm. year who won $10 million. 10 for 10, pocket 10s, 10 on the flop. That's how he won that main event. Also, I did a run it back with Martin Jacobson, so yeah. you go have to check that out where we broke it all down. Um, uh, the Jeff on YouTube, not Jeff Platt, but uh, another Jeff, um, is asking, when are we getting Jamie Gold running back? Well, that is an excellent question. Jamie Gold and I have had an ongoing uh, text conversation to find time in both of our schedules. He promised to do it. I told him I would love to have him. We are going to make it work. But my bigger concern is, how am I going to get Jerry Yang on the show? The, oh, the people's champ. The people's champ, Jerry Yang, raised to one million. Please, I have absolutely no way to contact him. I know a lot of people in poker. I've texted a lot of people. No one has Jerry Yang's contact details. My DMs are open on Twitter. If you have Jerry Yang's phone number, or if you live nearby, and if you and you want to knock on his door for me, please let me know, because I'd love to have Jerry Yang and watch the 07 main event final table. Because from that final table, there's not a whole lot of other people that I could really ask. Right. You know, Alex, Kraft, Alex Kravchenko, Raymond Rami. I, I just want to have, or Tuan Lam. I just want to have Jerry Yang himself. So I'm waiting on Jerry Yang to, to, to sort of, you know, come into my life. I played craps with Jerry Yang at the Rio a couple years ago, Remco. <laughs> I should have, should have gotten his contact information there. The people's champion, Jerry Yang. He was playing the don't pass line, though, which isn't really people's champ. Like, wow. and he wasn't in a great mood when he was losing, which isn't really people's champ. Like, <laughs> but, but when he was winning, he was a really nice guy. Like that. You, you can tell, you, you can tell someone's true nature by how they're handling losses. So yep. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. that. I'm sorry to hear that. How about Alan Boston? Just, I mean, been in the tank for decades with this queen oh. 10. I guess he's super short stack. Here we go. Call all in. That's not King High. Huh? Right. Highest card I have is a King. <laughs> yeah. <that's good>. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. He got me. Automatically, when he turns over king, it's two kings. He re-raised me. He's got two kings or ace king. And if he has ace king, I can make the right call because it's only I'm only a three to two dog, and then I'm getting two to one and calling it. Uh, and if it's two kings, obviously I'm making a bad call. So he had to figure out a way to talk me into uh, calling with my queen high, which I never should have done. I only made a small raise there so I can get off it if I got re-raised. And, and then he tells me he's got king high, and I believed him. <laughs> I wanted him to get all his chips in there, and I just kind of had enough. You know, I wanted the table to quiet down a little bit, which it did. <laughs> Ooh, Jack. The Jack is actually oh, hitting a, here. Not a you terrible talking me out of this. It could. It's okay. You'll, you'll, you'll regret talking to the sleazy 3300 you needed here. I Give him a 10 or something. It. The Jack's coming. Nope, the Alan seems well, super short. Yeah, definitely. Just for 
And like he said, small race so I could get off it, but then doesn't get off it. Bingo. Hi boys, I made a pair in the river. Nice playing with you. I mean, now now you and I really have to do the talking because Alan Boston yeah. left the room. When I told him that I had, uh, you know, King High, um, you know, I was just goofing with him. I, uh, that's unnecessary. <laughs> I, uh, I believe what people say, and I'm a real old school guy. And uh, <laughs> I believe what people I'm say. Not, I, just, uh, I just kind of feel foolish for actually believing someone who uh, probably isn't even smart enough to lie. I don't think there's anything Ooh. wrong with saying you have King High when you have two kings. I mean, that's just the name of the game. Um, he could have been telling the truth. He could have been lying. It doesn't matter. It's up to you as a poker player to try and figure <laughs> out what that is. If the guy is talking and he's telling you what he has, well, whether or not he's telling you the truth, he's giving away information by speaking in the first place. So anybody that complains about the other person talking about what they hand, uh, what they have, is obviously doesn't want free information. I completely disagree with that. Okay, I want to I want to hear some takes here in the chat. Let us know. Do you are you okay with lying or telling the truth truth in in table talk? Because it's pretty clear here. There's only one way to go, which is it, everything should be allowed. I'm even annoyed at the rules sometimes, where yeah, you yeah. can't you can't disclose the contents of your hand. I mean, come on, why not? Like even if you want to show one card, you know, go for it. Like the rules are too limited. I completely agree with you, especially like when when you are down to heads up. I, I would love to see where it's like really anything goes right uh, in poker. Now I know you got to prevent collusion, blah blah blah. So. You have to make some minor adjustments to that. But how about Alan Boston saying, I mean, I, I believe everything that people say. So, you know, I mean, he tells me as King High, wow. You know, and I, and so I believe him because I believe, I believe everybody. Right. It's not the greatest strategy, I don't think, if you're a professional poker player. That's just me, though, Remco. I, I don't know. It's, Maybe it's, that's why I've sucked at poker for so long, is I don't believe what people have to say. It's probably the counter opposite of what you really should be doing at the poker table, because... Maybe. Maybe Alan Boston also, you know, has lost a lot of money because poker players tell them, oh, I'll pay you back for this. And then just like yeah. loaning out money. He's like, okay, I believe him. Yeah, I exactly. Believe him. Uh, there, is a, there is a really fascinating documentary. We were talking about this before we came on the air. It's available on Amazon Prime. I think it's called The Best of It. Kind of gives you a real uh, look inside the mind of Alan Boston. And he's, he's dealt with some issues. And you mentioned this earlier as professional uh, college basketball better in a addition to poker i don't think he plays as much poker anymore but it's a really cool look at his his lifestyle uh and his mindset and the way the way he handles things so i would recommend that the best of it on amazon prime right okay well we got to go watch that i haven't seen that yet so by yeah, the way you would like it there's a lot of sports betting elements oh yeah perfect uh meanwhile mike madison is still lingering even though he's been eliminated <laughs> uh two players ago which is really funny um all right jamie gold pocket queens making a race antonio looking at ace four of hearts everyone's probably short stack like i mean this is like a bit of a turbo um, yeah and antonio's probably never folded ace four parts in his life <laughs> right so i think he's going to proceed in some form here how much oh wow. 10k having that hand i didn't care what he had there was no way in my mind he had kings or aces i was going to do what i had to do to make it look like i was trying to steal again so i bet a little bit more than i had the last time to get him to raise me i knew he was going to raise me I decided I wasn't going to let him just run over us. Wrapped and uh, even though it was a short stack, I had a decent amount to re-raise him. Mike's going to have fun on this one. I'm all in. Oh, God. boy. Snap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, sweat one more hand, I get to sweat the whole jabango. Well, you get to oh, sweat great, great that Mike stu stuck I around for this one. Last one. Jamie, you're sick, dude. Nice answer. It makes Alina Jad's job even easier if, if Mike Madison just sticks yeah, around sure. to do live commentary. Ali, Ali had Madison and Alan Boston there. He didn't have to, he could take the week. Paid, paid per word, made about a thousand dollars a word on this yeah. show. And sometimes you just have to take a stance, and sometimes they happen to have a hand. I mean, that's usually how I play. I raise a lot of hands, and then it seems like whenever somebody finally takes a stand, I have a hand. But I had no chip to fight with Jamie. He hasn't won it yet. Good luck, boys. I haven't won it yet. Hey, it was a pleasure hey, playing hey. with you. We have not won it yet. <laughs> it was a pleasure playing Old with you. Old reverse jinx. You can easily do that. You wouldn't yeah, take yeah. my head before. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. Nice right, playing right. with you, Jamie. Yeah, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Don't shake his hand. Say, say, I don't feel comfortable here. Shut up. You got to like. I love how mad I was coaching Jamie Gold as if this is the first time he's playing poker. Flop. Wow, that is such a good flop for you, bro. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. No. Really still a one the, the, the camo cargo shorts on Asfendiari, that's a look oh, nice. I did not see coming. The queen 
would have been it's, better. I love how you guys are talking. Oh, yeah, it's either an eight, a nine, or a ten. I don't even know what the flop is. It's really great. It wasn't a very good flop for you, buddy. No. Running Probably sevens will look good for you, though, right? Yeah, running sevens. You got three outs. You have three outs. Mike. The Mike playing the commentator role. I was thinking of <laughs> all the outs. Always thinking of the of the most exciting way this could still end. Um, that was a really, really, really bad, yeah, bad card for you. Yeah. <laughs> You're down the three outs. With one That's just a complete blank. It's not even that bad of a right, card. It doesn't affect the like. Doesn't yeah. change anything really. Like it was a queen. Well, when he said that, I was like, oh, there must be a third club, but it's only two, right, right. two on the board. Uh, I don't think you can do that uh, oh in 2020, God. by the way. I mean, you can put your hands on somebody's face. Wow. These times that we live in. What a surprise. Can we get security in here to uh, escort Mike Madison off the property? He's uh... a, a double bad beat for Antonio. He loses and then has to walk out with Madison. Sometimes things just fall into place when you are the kind of player that I am that I can show some bluffs. I can make moves with eight deuce. I make moves with deuce four. If you're not willing to do that, a lot of people will say, well, how come I never get lucky enough to have somebody put in all their chips when I have queens? Well, you have sure. to set up those other moves. If you're willing to move and put a lot of chips on a deuce four or an eight deuce, which people think is just crazy, it's not that crazy as long as you can pull the trigger when good things happen and, and those things kind of come together. He just happened to have a couple of beautiful ladies and my good old ace four didn't hold up. And that was that. Sayonara. I just want to make reference to a Facebook chat here. Uh, Joel Turner is suggesting Kui win for run it back. Um, I've spoken to Kui when he made the final table. Um, I'm not sure his, his English is good enough as much as right, I think he's right. a very entertaining character to um, you know carry a show like this. But however, if he wants to do it, you know I'll happily have it because yeah. his win was epic. The way he, he beat on uh, Gordon Veo and Cliff Joseph oh. was just <laughs> tremendous. Um, ben LeBlanc is saying, lie, lie, lie to win it all. Yes, I agree, Ben. Lying your way to a victory is probably the, the, the sweetest way to get a win. Uh, Timmy Fritz is uh, saying the same thing. He says, I do both all the time. I love telling one of the regulars in my home game when I have the nuts, he never believes me and calls every single time. But you might not want to, you know, tell me that because, you know, now when I when I see you in a game, Timmy, I, I know what to do. But um, appreciate the sentiments. Um, if you guys have any more questions, please keep them coming on Facebook and YouTube. We are live watching the Poker After Dark um, week 16, season two, with uh, Mike Sexton still in the hunt, as well as Jamie Gold. We have uh, Paul Wasica in the mix, and they're playing for 120K, so this is not, not peanuts they're playing for. The old Poker After Dark sit and go format <laughs> exactly. is so beautiful. Exactly. Do you still have aspirations, Jeff? Do you still want to like you know play higher and higher stakes when, when poker comes back in its natural form? Can we expect to see you back on Poker After Dark and shows like that? Uh, it's a good question. I, you know, I'm, I'm not most likely not going to get to that kind of top level, but I, I love poker tournaments. I, I love competing in poker tournaments. I'm more of the guy Renko who you'll see at those uh, Venetian deep stack events, firing the 400s and the 600s of the world, play online a little bit, um, you know, in the lab Renko studying some poker here and there and uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll like see. but I certainly miss it. I certainly miss the live poker tournament scene. Right. A pair for everyone here, top, middle, and bottom for all three players. Um, yeah, you're, you're at the Venetian Deep Stack level. I'm at more like the Tropicana Nightly level. So <laughs> right. I'm going to try to make my way up to, uh, to your level at some point. We, we crushed the uh, Red Rock Nightly together, Ooh. man. We double, double final table appearance. I mean, that's as good as it gets I right mean, there. I, ha I had to beg you to come play. You laid regged, mm -hmm. you showed up, and you ran all over the table, even though I was chip leader basically the entire tournament. Um, yep. I, you know, I played excellent. I played great. You know, you played great poker, phenomenal. I left that tournament thinking, wow, yeah, Remco played such incredible poker. It, it was surreal. I just, I just got lucky. That's that's what I do. I left a lasting impression on the Red Rock Poker Room. I'm, I'm not even sure. Yeah, I'm they're still game. talking about it. They yeah, are. Yeah, they are. Sure. They just reopened actually. Um, they did. Yeah, I was surprised. I, I had heard that they were going to be shut down for a while, but maybe they saw the success of other poker rooms in Las Vegas and said, "Why not go for it? Why not give it a shot?" Right, and of course, you know, Jeff, you've been playing online video poker. Is that your new gig? <laughs> I wish I do have the app though on my iPad. You know, got to run the video poker Sims, Remco. Yeah, got to run the spots. Uh, it's it's my own version of a solver. It's just for video poker. It's called an addiction, Jeff. Just you know, yeah, accept yeah, it. Well, yeah. <laughs> Debatable, man. It's always an important thing to be doing. I'm all in. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's an interesting shove. I had top pair with a ten kicker. Top I didn't pair. Think there was any chance he had an overpair, or he would have raised the pot pre-flop. Yep. 
It's kind of like, what's the value of shoving oh, there if you're Wasika? Right. So bad for me. 100%. You're going to get called by the hands that you are not beating, and the hands that you are beating are going to fold. Yep. I think that Wasika really got caught here in perhaps not being sure what to do, and just, you yeah. know, in case of doubt, go all in. Yeah. That's not against the great Mike Sexton. Not going to work. No, no matter what happens, that's a hell of a call, Mike. No, no matter what happens, that's a hell of a call. I mean, it's a dry board, three handed with too. top air. Yeah. Oh. Back to a flush draw. You're, You're targeting like 7 6 exactly yeah. with the Wasika shove. Great move. Hold. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Pull it, pull it Hold, out. Hold, Mike. Now I'm going to have to play I one of you with like no chips. I thought you had like a 6 7. Or a 3 even, 4. Even just the, the top <laughs> is a 6 it's 7. Not a bad move to make them. You kind of have to say that at that point, right? Right, right, right. At that point, to save face, you're like, oh, on NBC, I just dusted it all off. Wow. Good game, Paul Wasser. Thank you, Paul. Nice call. Call. Oh, no, shaking hands? Come on, guys. I did think I could. Right, that's yeah. again, not, not something we're going to see in 2020. But I decided to go with that hand, and fortunately, I was right. He had middle pair. And Remco, do you know that, what uh, Paul Wasika is up to nowadays? Wow, that's a great question. Uh, Paul, if you're watching, I know you're a big fan of the show probably. Yeah. Paul's, um, Paul's tuning in. Please get in touch. I love to, I love to see Paul Wasika on one of these shows and just maybe maybe if Jamie Gold keeps postponing our show, I might have to watch the 06 main event yeah, with Paul Wasika. Yeah, just do it with Wasika. <laughs> um, but looking at his Hendon mob, he's mm -hmm. got a few uh, charity event caches. Um, West Hollywood, Colorado Poker Championship. Uh, his last WSOP cash dates back to 2015. Um, mm. His last main event uh, cash dates back to 2013. Um, yeah, it, it looks as though he might have left the game behind, as, at least on a serious level. Um, he he did have a, a couple of good years there, winning a WSOP circuit event after winning, yeah. or I mean, finishing second in the main event, but still. And of course, he was the winner of the 07 NBC Heads Up Championship, mm. which um, I really hope we'll we'll see that event again in the future. Uh, because that was one of my favorites. He beat he beat Chad Brown heads up. Um, R.I.P. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite characters in the game. Yeah. Chad Brown was sadly passed away. Uh, Shannon Elizabeth finishing in third place. Uh, Gavin Smith finishing in fourth place. Uh, R.I.P. Wow, man, that's sad. Um, that is sad. But what like you said, I mean, what a great tournament, right? Yeah. How good was that for poker? To have that national heads up championship on national television. I mean that that. That was one of the premier events in all of poker. That's one you circle on the calendar at the beginning of the year for sure. And I'm with you. I hope it comes back in some form. Absolutely. And just think about the discussions to come to a field of 64 for, you know, what, what if NBC Huds Up ever comes back. Just yeah. think about how exciting that's going to be to figure yeah. out which 64 players are going to be invited to play. And then you have the draft party at night and there's mm -hmm. going to be, you know, the, the bracket and everything. I, I think it's a perfect tournament. I think so too. And obviously, we got a place to do it, man. Poker Go Studio. Don't even have to change anything. We don't have to go to Caesars this time. Let's just yeah, get talk to Maury Remco. Set yeah. it up. I'll get Maury on the phone. We, we, okay. we have to make this happen. I'd love to have NBC heads up back. All right. We are heads up now as well on Poker After Dark. Mike Sexton <laughs> against Jamie Gold battling for 120K. Also, newsflash $0 for second place. Okay. So, Remco, how many times do you think they chopped? Every on time. Poker After Dark in the first couple of years, when there's 120k up top and like you said, zero for second. Every time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I really think that for these full tilt pros, which neither of these players are, mm -hmm. I think there was no reason to chop because it was a free roll anyway. So they sort of swing sure. for the fences. When it's two non full tilt guys getting heads up, Mike Mike Sexton and Jamie Gold, in, as an example, there might have been a better chance of this. But this is also coming off Jamie Gold winning twelve million dollars in the main event um, just a few months prior. So I think there was no chop in this event, but I think in general there probably were a lot of chops. Yeah, I think that's a good way to sum it up. All right, we got top pair against middle pair. All in. And and the nut flush draw. Oh. <laughs> Pedal to the metal. <laughs> More. Get ace deuce of diamonds. What? Whoa! That called it. Monster. If, it. if you have that, I'm in dire straits. So I'm gonna tell you the truth. Oh wow! Not. Let's see Whoa, that again. Mike Sexton. Get ace deuce of diamonds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> More. Get ace deuce of diamonds. Wow. That would be a monster. If, it, if you have that, I'm in dire straits. So I'm gonna tell you the truth. But if you don't. If I don't, where am I? I got a shot to win it. If you don't, I have the best hand. If I just have a diamond draw, but I can always draw out, you don't want to take that chance. I 
Gosh, can't believe you wouldn't raise with Ace High before the flop. I'm gonna call this back. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> wow, calls it out. Still wow. in trouble. I thought you would raise with it. That's a good assessment from Mike. Yeah, absolutely. You would think Jamie's raising all of his Ace Highs free. Right. Despite putting Jamie dead on the right hand, Mike made the call and Jamie was an 88% favorite to double up. Hey, six of diamonds, six yeah. clubs. Yeah, exactly. All right. Any black queen will do. Doesn't change anything. Four no. or six. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Come on. Come on, Mike. Pull it out. Be there. Yeah. All right, double up for Jamie Dare. Mike Sexton called it out perfectly. I yeah, love I that. Even, even though he could have set any sort of ace, but the fact that it's the ace deuce of diamonds is just right. awesome. <laughs> uh, for the people watching the show, and if you enjoyed the content, please like this video, subscribe to mm. the channel, and uh, follow us on Facebook if you are watching us there. Um, if you have any questions, suggestions, hypotheticals, uh, ideas for prop bets, please let us know in the chat or in the comments. We love to uh, discuss it and... Uh, you know, maybe entertain you guys a little bit with that. Uh, Scott uh, Sandberg says good stuff, guys. I appreciate it. Jeff appreciates Thanks. it too. We love it. Um, Very much. Appreciate Jeff, what are you what are you up to? When can people watch you again? You're you're still doing the Twitch thing, right? Still doing the Twitch thing. Twitch.tv slash Jeff Platt. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Going to fire some events on WSOP.com. We'll have some WSOP coverage at the GG events. GG is giving me the cards out feed wow. for the final tables, which has been really cool. Uh, to basically award some bracelets on our channel. Would love to have you guys check it out. It'll be a lot of fun. And also doing some coverage, some feature table coverage of the World Poker Tour World Online Championships events. That's on day two. That's every Monday. But obviously, Remco, there will be no Twitch streaming during Dallas Mavericks playoff basketball games. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but that Porzingis ejection yeah. was a joke. Yeah, that was horrendous. Those are two extremely weak technicals. At, at, for for that to happen at any point in the year is extremely questionable. And the playoffs, come on. Porzingis' first career ejection. I yeah, mean, first first career playoff game, too. Um, yeah. By the way, I think we're missing a big hand here. Yeah. By the way, for the people in the one, for, for the people in the chat, let <laughs> us know what your NBA rooting interest is because, of course, mm -hmm. I'm a big Raptors fan. Jeff is a big Mavs fan. Uh, I'm gonna just rewind and we're gonna sure. watch his hand and actually pay attention to it because both players made a big hand and they're playing heads up. So let's let's listen in. I was moving in pretty much on anything. Uh, he didn't have to. He used to win. Just three hands later, oh, Jamie goodness. limped in with the 10-5 of diamonds. I like it. Okay, go ahead. I see your question, Michael, on Facebook. We'll get to it in just a the sec. The flop gave both players a pair of fives. On the last hand, when I hit uh, bottom pair, I didn't necessarily think I was good, but I had to take a stab at the pot. I believe he just called me. Then another five came, oh, and baby. I felt like I was golden. Jim, Jim. Both the river was perfect oh for Mike, God. but a disaster for Jamie. Sexton Woo. had gone from having the worst kicker to having the best hand. No shame in checking. I do love thinking back of the Jamie Gold era where every single thing he said was sort of spot on and good for yeah. the decisions of his opponent and sort of throwing people off. Uh, I think of, over time he's lost it a little, lost that touch a little bit. Um, but it was truly intimidating watching it. Like he, he a lot of times threw his opponents off. Uh, Sexton, by the way, here leads for 10K. Call you. I got to move all in or fold. <laughs> I guess you aren't all in. I'm all in. Not call. Sure. I got a five. Full house. Oh, 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 wow. He turned over the five seven, so <laughs> what could you do? He did the best that uh, that he could have done to get all my money in there. He played it perfectly. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if I have it covered or not. Of course so. you do. It's an honor playing with him. I mean, I was a huge fan when I started watching poker on television. You know, I, I never thought I'd be playing against him, especially heads up. Um, so I had a lot of fun. Jamie Gold is an aggressive player, and I knew that when I was playing. This is the first time I've actually been at a table and played with Jamie Gold. 
So I know it's very difficult to put him on a hand, as we say, you know, because he can raise with any two cards, an eight-deuce just as easy as two aces. So you never really know what he's got. But, uh, you know, it was fun to play him, and obviously uh, things worked out well for me. After the break, this week's winner, Mike Sexton, sits down with Shauna Hyatt. All right, let's hear it from Shauna then. Yeah, let's do it. Get it, Shauna. What's up, Shauna? I'm sure she's watching. Of course. Welcome back to the director's cut of NBC's Poker After Dark. I'm. Yeah, I don't know if I have you covered. Oh not. wait, that that. I'm with Shauna. Technical difficulties. Welcome Here back we are. to Figure the director's out, cut of NBC's Poker After Dark. I'm Shauna Hyatt. I'm here with this week's winner, Mike Sexton. Mike, your poker resume garners so much respect. Did you take advantage of that tonight? Well, you know, I have a lot of experience in poker, but some of these other guys at the table, mm -hmm. and you know, when you're up against the world champion, and the guy that was runner-up to the world champion, and these other champions at the table, you know, they have resumes as well. So, but, but I'm confident in my abilities to play, and when I get a chance to play, I enjoy it, and certainly I enjoyed tonight. Did your past experience at Poker After Dark help you form a strategy for tonight? Well, you know, last year I played, I didn't win my table, but I did gain some experience. Mm -hmm. And playing shorthanded poker, of course, uh, you know, I feel like I might have a little bit of edge over these guys because, you know, I've seen so much shorthanded play on every hand, in fact, on the World Poker Tour, in the history of the World Poker Tour. And I see what guys are doing to win these titles out there. Right. So I'm just starting to apply it to my game a little bit and it's paying off. So, Mike, I am so happy for you. And it's an honor to be able to interview you. And congratulations. Well, thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. And I've appreciated working with you over the years and certainly being around you. It just brought me good luck. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Aww. Mike Sexton is this week's champion. So lovely. So Shauna did WPT before Poker After Dark then, I guess? I think so. Yeah, I think I guess. so. so. I mean, based on the way they're talking, I guess that's the way. Yeah, that makes sense. That worked out. Um, we're going to take a few more questions here from people in the chat. I'm going to do this, you know, roll this back and let the footage roll while we just uh, take a few more questions. Um, more people asking for Jamie Gold running back. Yes, it, it will happen. We're going to watch the yeah. 06 main event final table. And we're definitely going to go deep into everything that went down there in that main event. Actually, you know what I'll do with Jamie? I'll watch day seven and the main event final table because I know for a fact that the main event final table was only one episode. So you cannot discuss the entire 06 main event in 45 minutes. It's just, it's just impossible. So we'll make it into a bit of a longer show. We'll have, we'll have some beverages and we'll just have some fun with Jamie. Um, let's see. We've got some Miami Heat fans here. Um, we got some fans. I, I, I like the Heat. I do. I do really, 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 really like the Heat in their series against the Pacers. And Heat only uh, minus four, four and a half Remco. I think Ooh. there's some value there, baby. Ooh. We're gonna get some bets going there on some NBA action. Alex is asking if is there any chance they will bring back Poker After Dark past COVID? Alex, let me tell you this: there is no chance it won't be back. How about that? Ooh, -ho -ho, I like that. Poker After Dark. Good little tease from Remco and Kama. Poker After Dark. the best in the business. Definitely. Oh, I mean, best in the business. I mean, I got Jeff Platt on the show. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, yeah, Poker After Dark definitely coming back to Poker Go. Also, High Stakes Poker coming back. That's going to be a big one. We have all seven seasons of High Stakes Poker available on Poker Go. If you want to get back in time, turn on the time machine and watch some of those iconic hands. Sammy Farha, Patrick Antonius, all the boys clashing. Um, that's going to be brought back to life. So season eight of High Stakes Poker is coming, of course, when it's safe, when past COVID we can organize a game like High Stakes Poker. So, you know, go to Poker Go and get caught up, watch all the action, and, you know, don't miss out on the return of High Stakes Poker when that'll happen. And also, let me just say, High Stakes Duel was absolutely insane. Yes. It was an incredible matchup between Antonio Esfandiari and Phil Helmuth. And, of course, Mr. Phil Helmuth, Mr. 15 Bracelets, he pulled out the win, and then Antonio challenged him for the rematch. Jeff, look back on that battle for me, and, and how do you feel about round two? I thought round one was terrific. It, it was incredibly compelling television. It was some of the best poker content that I've seen in a long time. I mean, listen, when you have characters like Antonio Spandiari and Phil Helmy, who are both super competitive, that's going to set up so, so well for a show. Love the concept. Love that they're playing for $200,000 now in round two. We know Antonio will keep rematching and rematching and rematching until... Uh, he loses weight. We, we can't necessarily say and until he wins, I should say. We, we right. can't necessarily say the same for Phil. I know that Phil has an out if he wins these first three matches, which would all come against Antonio, considering if Antonio lost in round two, he would challenge again for round three. So I'm hoping, I love Phil Helmuth, but I either want him to win three in a row and not leave 
or have Antonio win a couple and let's, you know, let's ramp up the stakes even more, which seems like that's the direction that this is going. Um, but before we even get to all that, again, to have these two go head to head again with $200,000 on the line, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not very good at math, but I do know that right. 200,000 times two is 400,000 mm -hmm. and 400,000 times two is 800,000. Mm -hmm. I can keep, I can keep going for only a few more steps off the top of my head. But let me just say that High Stakes Duel can get out of hand really, really quickly. So if you are a fan of poker and if you haven't seen this yet, High Stakes Duel is available on PokerGo, but also on YouTube and Facebook. If you want to watch the entire show that is going to be available for you to watch, get ready for round two. I believe it's going to be somewhere in September. We're still waiting on final details okay. on when that's being played out because, of course, Phil Helmuth had to fly down to Cabo, probably on some private jet, to play <laughs> the online bracelet events because he is, of course, chasing after number 16 shout out to Lumistaken. that's of course Helmy's name online um i think that does it for us jeff we've we've gone through this uh, entire event this beautiful poker after dark final table won by one of our favorites mike sexton shout out to mike yes. um it, it's 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 awesome to see him win and it's an honor to uh, be able to say that i that i know mike a little bit and you know hope things are, are well with him and uh, of course the Tournament of Champions that he won against Daniel Negrano was also part of a Running Back episode. So if you want to go back and watch that, that's also available on this YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, follow us on Facebook, like that video. Oh my God, so much going on, but please, <laughs> it's the least you can do for all this amazing content. Jeff Platt on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jeff Platt if you want to follow him. If you want to be part of the rail, if you want to see him, are you going to win something or are you just, are you just going to enjoy Oh, no, it? no, no, definitely okay. not. But I'm going to play. I'm going to try. You know, I'm going to make an effort. And let me say, Remco, you said it. I mean, Mike Sexton, just I keep going back to it. One of the best ambassadors of the game, just an absolute class act. He treats everybody with the same amount of respect, which is an incredible amount of respect. I mean, he's just a a true joy uh, to be around and, and is an absolute legend, no question about it. Absolutely, and so is Shauna Hyatt. For yes. Jeff Platt, my name is Rem Karinkama. This was Run It Back. Please come back on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Dutch Boyd and myself are Ooh. watching a 2006 Six Max bracelet event in which he beat Joe Hashem heads up. I can tell you, there's some takes. There is definitely going to be some takes. It's going to be exciting to see all that. You guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on Thursday. Thank <laughs> you.